Okay, we still have another exciting panel coming up. The panel next is Kazakhstan Tourism After COVID-19. Your moderator will be Anna Claudia Tarapel. She's your moderator. And the panelists will be Gerzan Yerkinbayev, chairman of the Kazakh Tourism Agency. Hello everybody. I know it's a long day, it's a long day, but we have so much important things to find out today and all the panelists are coming with so important uh, inputs. So I will have a very important and interesting discussion about the Kazakh tourism after the COVID-19 pandemic period. And I have together with me, and I will invite at the stage, the chairman of the board of the state company Kazakh Tourism, which is in the suborder of the Ministry of Culture and Sport, Mr. Yerzan Yerkinbaev. And if I didn't pronounce it correctly, I apologize, but I will find exactly the name right now. So, Mr. Yerkinbaev, it's right? Correct. It is correct. Oh, I am relaxed right now. <laughs> Please take your seats and I'm, I'm coming with you to have a very important discussion about the Kazakh tourism. So, Mr. Yerkinbaev, yes, Yezimbaev. Yerkinbaev, but you can call me Erjan. Great, Erjan. I am Claudia. Whatever is I am Claudia. It's okay. perfect like Thank that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much also. From the beginning, I want to discuss a little bit about the state of play of the activity of tourism sector in the pandemic period. I think it's important to know how the tourism, cultural and sports events and activity were affected in your country by this pandemic crisis. Okay, well, it was, uh, it was March 16 when Kazakhstan proclaimed the state of emergency. It was, I think, pretty much the same all over the world. Uh, a very stressful time. Uh, we locked down the, uh, the country. We stopped uh, all uh, flights. And, uh, but uh, I have to mention that Kazakhstan was not, uh, was not collapsed. It was not paralyzed with the fear of uh, what was happening. And we were in a lockdown only for two months, and then we started to slow down and start coming back to the, to the life. So, uh, but that period of time was very difficult because we used to, we, we were open for 73 countries with free visa regime, we had to stop that. And only 20% of hotels could continue the operation, and they had to convert to either to hospitals or to provide delivery services like uh, laundry or food and beverage. And overall, the uh, inbound travel has seen 76% drop, and uh, domestic tourism has shrunk by 33%. So, very difficult times. But um, and during that time, if we're talking about uh, big events like uh, sports events or cultural events, of course, at the very beginning, uh, there was nothing. A few uh, sports events like um, football tournament between uh, Kazakhstan and France and some uh, tennis tournaments and um, a plays of um, national hockey team, but with no spectators, um, empty stands. But later, uh, there was an, a, new, a new system implemented, which uh, gives on, um, uh, on a infection rate per day to each city uh, three types of grades, like green, orange, and uh, red. So if the city is in, for example, a green zone, uh, it can have free, no limits for domestic transportation, or for example, if we're talking about the exhibitions, uh, if you're in the green zone, you can have not more than 250 visitors, when if you're in the red zone, you, ha you can have only 150 visitors, and these kind of things. So um, the good thing, we were still trying to, to be keep, open and to yes, keep. to keep uh, tourism sector and industry operational Active and operational. alive, to keep staff, to keep employees, and try to pay uh, salaries and those people who were 
who were who stayed uh, without jobs, they, uh, the government uh, yes, took care of them. Yes, I want to ask you about this because you know, in every member, in every state, it is very. It was a very difficult period for the tourism sector, and I think uh, all the. Uh, players from the tourism industry looked at the government as, and said, please, we need some support from your part. So I want to ask you if the government of Kazakhstan was supportive and offering so, some kind of financial support or... Yes, uh, of course. There was to, a, a very the serious players. financial support. As I uh, mentioned, uh, people who lost their jobs, they were automatically entitled to a minimum wage. Uh, small, medium and large businesses, they were exempted from payroll tax and owner, owners of restaurants and um, hotels, uh, they were, uh, they were uh, waived property tax and for small and medium sized business, um, the uh, cheap uh, loans with low interest were provided just to keep uh, operational life of the industry. So uh, basically uh, it's I can say for sure that uh, government was very helpful at that time. And the good thing is uh, we were not collapsed for a long period of time, just paying these uh, wages and keeping industry with subsidiaries, but we created some, a very fine balance between uh, keeping uh, people wealthy at that time, what I can say wealthy, and uh, keep operations working and going on with hotels and other types of tourism industry. So I think we might say that it was a kind of partnership uh, between the private and the public sector and uh, important sure. uh, support from, uh, from the government. Uh, Actually, that, uh, that role at that time between the government, between the parliament and between the uh, associations, that, uh, the um, coordination of the exactly. relations and questions was uh, was, was led by Kazakh tourism. Oh, great, because it, was, it is very important that the, play, uh, the players from the tourism sector to stay at the same table with the government and to explain the problems exactly. that they are facing. Especially, especially at these uh, kind of times, you, you have, it's very important to stay all together and develop a very, uh, very effective measures to, um, to, to be able to survive. Yes, we spoke a little bit about, let's say, the public sector, but now I want to, to come to the private sector, to the players in the, touristic, uh, uh, in the tourism, and I want to ask you how they adapt to the new circumstances during this, this pandemic period, because also they have to adapt to the new realities. Yeah, um, actually, uh, as I said, uh, some, some um, hotels, for example, they decided to close completely. Some, some of them, they, keep, uh, they were keeping operations. Uh, f if we're talking about restaurants, uh, for example, in banquet halls, uh, yeah, from when, when first release uh, of the regime happened, not more than 15 people were allowed to gather together, but then it became at 50 people, and uh, now it's more or less okay. Uh, so everybody's trying uh, like, uh, to, uh, to work. Not, not, not just to sit and cry that everything is very bad, especially the starting of June, uh, the protocols for every region and for every country, they are more flexible since the situation is better. So now it's much more easier. Okay. I want to ask you, what is the success story of the Kazakhstan during the, this pandemic period? Because I understood that uh, you still want to to keep open all the activity in the tourism sector and also in the cultural and spo uh, sport events. And uh, in the same time to offer safety and security to the tourist and to the clients, but also keeping the experience, the experience of entertainment, the cultural experience, uh, let's say the natural experience. So what is, yep. um, let's say, the receipt for this? Uh, Okay. Um, for this kind of making tourism in the pandemic period. Um, as I mentioned already, it was a very good success that we could find this fine balance between uh, try to be active, try to continue work and not let the uh, virus uh, show the aggressivity. So 
The success, I think, is that uh, we could uh, transform, we could change the priorities, and during that year, during 2020, we uh, allocated additional budgets. Uh, for example, we uh, allocated 160 million US dollars for 59 projects, which are roads, utilities, Can you some projects? To, the, to, the, uh, to the touristic destinations. So we were building them in one year, uh, so now the destinations are more accessible, not only for tourists, but for investors as well. So only in one year we made a huge, uh, a huge development on the uh, infrastructure of tourism. Uh, this, is, this is a very so great advantage. So this will be very helpful also for the future, because in this it pandemic is, is, period, yes. uh, you created everything new was, infrastructure. Everything was, yeah, everything was done just to be prepared for post-pandemic era, which is happening now. And uh, we were successful on that. At the same time, we, uh, we, were, uh, we, we, we were still kept in, on the radars of potential tourists. So we didn't stop our marketing. And uh, you might remember even what those. Uh, what markets are you targeting at this moment? Uh, we have, uh, we are very, at this moment, at this moment, we are open. We have opened some uh, airline connections with Turkey, South Korea, Russia, G uh, Georgia, Germany, United Arab Emirates. So we are already uh, have connections, and we believe that soon we will have more flights, and we will Do try to work out. Do you think that out. until the end of the year you will have uh, connections? We, will, with we are working hard on that, and we, uh, we are looking forward to come to come back to that pre-visa regime as soon as possible. Therefore, uh, during the last year, we built absolutely new, uh, very high-level touristic destinations. One is uh, historical city, Turkestan. Yes, uh, give me some examples. Yeah, fifth century, an old city, very interesting one. And during uh, 2020, we built a new infrastructure which is offering a very beautiful different hotels, restaurants, uh, shopping area, museums. Uh, destination with uh, with um, international airport and very accessible, so it will be interesting for people. Another new destination, which was made from scratch, we can say is a, a 150 hectare um, uh, touristic center with uh, with different types of branded hotels. First was Rixas for 500 keys, and this year Fairmont is coming with uh, golf. Uh, beaches and uh, go, go golf um, uh, and amusement parks and retail area and with the uh, beautiful villas. So those new destinations, they were they were built in one year. So they were created in this pandemic they are created period. Th now they operate very well. So uh, we're looking forward to have more clients uh, and we believe that it will happen soon. Okay, great. Because we have a representative of uh, tourism from uh, almost all, uh, all the world. Can you share with us some examples of good practices during this pandemic period? Maybe you will give some inspiration to, to other countries. And yeah. I think it, this stage and this conference, it's also opportunity yeah, yeah, to I'm sharing I'm our best practices in uh, recovering and restarting tourism. Sure. Uh, from country to country, from case to case, it might be a bit different, but if we're talking uh, about our experience, uh, Kazakhstan is not a small country, it's, a, it's, it's number nine in the world, it's the size of Western Europe, and we have so many beautiful national parks and uh, naturally protected areas, it's 10% of a country. So we discovered during that period that those kind of different landscapes, glaciers, deserts, forests, lakes, it can be also a very huge uh, potential for uh, ecotourism development. So during 2020, when the world was uh, a bit a kind of collapsed, we could find new investors for each national park, and they have already started. National or foreign investors? Local. Local investors. Local investors, yeah. For national parks, uh, only local investors can apply because this is the law in okay. Kazakhstan. So they have already started building uh, touristic infrastructure like visitor centers, rental points, hotels, glampings, uh, hiking trails. And soon we're going to have uh, a very beautiful destinations in our national parks and uh, for, uh, for which are very interested, uh, interesting for uh, European, for example, uh, tourists. 
Another case uh, I can mention is that um, during pandemic when kids were uh, locked at home and uh, we, we implemented and tried a new program, we started to take kids outside, not to keep them in the school, and we provided classes which we called life classes or life lessons. For example, if it's a biology, then we, we had kids in the zoo. If it's, uh, for example, uh, physics, then we took them to the plants. And it was a very successful uh, experience because today a kid and tomorrow he becomes a tourist. So if, if we show them the country today, if we show them how rich Kazakhstan for UNESCO uh, objects and etc., this, this give you a, like a seeds, this give you a more tomorrow. So this was another very successful story. So if I understood very well, during this pandemic period, you created your government and uh, uh, your institution created a tourism for tomorrow. Exactly. And so this is, I might say, this is the strategy that the, your government had for the promotion and development of the Kazakh tourism. Yes, this this what uh, what we could prepare together with the associations, with Kazakh tourism and the ministry. And from the side of the government and the parliament, uh, we had a great chance to make a nice homework on legislation, and new norms and new uh, new laws are uh, coming soon. For example, since uh, next year, uh, the investors who who are building, uh, for example, um, a hotel, they will get immediate like a cash back. Uh, of 10% on of total investments. So if you flexibilize yes, the, yeah. the legislation for investing in a tourism Sure, a if tourism you're building sector. a ski resort, you're getting 25%, for example, of your total investments. Or if you're buying a touristic class buses, then These you These are get incentives, financial yeah, incentives. Yeah, yeah, financial for incentives. So we believe that 2022 will be very, very good year in terms of tourism development for, uh, for our country. Great. I think we, we have uh, very important information regarding the uh, tourism in Kazakhstan. And uh, because uh, also in my TV shows, I like to give the last word to my guests. I want to let you to have yeah. the final word and to promote your country. And maybe tomorrow um, or I am in the next year to have more... Uh, more tourists from uh, from this uh, conference in your country. Well, let me uh, let me use this chance uh, and let me appreciate uh, the founders of this uh, meeting of this event, very beautiful event. And I would like, of course, to invite all the guests uh, to to meet Kazakhstan, to see Kazakhstan, to see uh, the diverse of the nature, to see the history and very kind people. So you're welcome. Thank Where you very much. Where you will invite me if I come to Kazakhstan? I will take you with me when I'm back from <laughs> this event. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We have to negotiate on this, but oh, for sure I will okay. come to visit Kazakhstan. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, sir.